We're in the city of Sano, north of Japan's capital, Tokyo. The area is perhaps best known for one of the country's favorite dishes, ramen. It's also the headquarters of the Japanese Cricket Association, which recently hosted a number of regional tournaments. Yeah, to start with, I think um, it'll leave a big legacy to Sano as a city. Um, Sano's embraced cricket as a city of cricket. Um, the mayor has declared Sano to be a sports city and in, in the centre of that is cricket. Um, so hopefully through this tournament we can get more people down to the ground and understand what the cricket is all about. Um, also on a national scale we'll have some national media down uh, covering us for the first time. So um, that's exciting to be able to get that word across to the rest of the nation. It was therefore fitting that Sano was the host city for this year's edition of the Pepsi ICC East Asia Pacific Women's Trophy. The tournament featured six teams taking part across three venues. Samoa and the Cook Islands were the two affiliate members alongside three associate nations, Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu and the host, Japan. An invitational 11 from Australia, Cricket Without Borders was the sixth side, playing friendly games with the other five competitive squads. Although there was a carnival atmosphere in the city, for the more established teams in the region, this was a serious competition and they were determined to win it. We had a practice match against Hong Kong Cricket Club uh, two weeks ago and uh, we had uh, five matches and uh, we won all games. We believe 100% we will win this tournament. And for those teams looking for experience, these tournaments provide a platform to judge their development. The girls have been working a lot on their batting techniques. Um, the girls in Samoa are looking really, really good. I'm really impressed with how they're coming along. Um, looking really strong, solid in bowling and batting, yeah. For the Cricket Without Borders team, coached by former Australia Test International Bryce McGain, it was a chance to make friends and enjoy the cultural experience. It's really about promoting the game for women um, and the opportunity to come, Jap come to Japan is just really exciting for all of us, so yeah, it's really good. We hope to make it competitive matches so that, well, everybody gets a go and it it makes it fair for the opposition and hopefully we might win a few games and that would be good fun but if not it's all good just playing the game and loving the game spirit of the game so it's all good on to the action and sano greeted all with glorious weather throughout the five days and the large crowds in attendance proved the popularity of the event after intense battle for over four days the final came down to the two table toppers, host Japan and Papua New Guinea. Yeah, into the final, a few nervous moments there, a little bit close for comfort, and the you know the heart rate's still still up about 150, but you know, really pleased to be in the final. Yeah. The home team, having won the previous two tournaments in 2010 and 2012, were aiming for a hat trick. As the final day dawned on Sano, a crowd of close to a thousand people turned up to watch. Papua New Guinea won the toss and decided to bat first and managed to get 113 runs on the board. Chasing the modest total, Japan fell short by 11 runs in a thrilling finale. Papua New Guinea emerged as the new Pepsi ICC EAP Women's Trophy winner and also regained the number one ranking in the East Asia Pacific region. This year's tournament not only gave us a new champion, but it also saw plenty of talent and individual brilliance on display too. Away from the final, Samoa's Molegi Tulagi scored the first T20 ton by any woman in the region smashing a 74 ball 104 against the Cook Islands. Her compatriot Regina Lilil was named the player of the tournament as Samoa finished third. Three-time World Cup winner for Australia, Alex Blackwell was in Sano as the tournament ambassador and she was impressed with the talent on display. Look, I was really thrilled to, to hear that there's a 45% 
participation for, for women in cricket in the region and, and that's something to be really proud of and um, yeah look I, I'm really surprised by that I didn't know how how heavy that involvement was um, so it's great to see uh, everyone just loving the game and, and getting so much out of it and I can just see in this region cricket's going to really take off and I hope to be involved to see where it's going to be in you know a couple of years or five years and some of these nations I'm sure will be playing at the World Cup. The five days of the tournament had showcased the depth of talent and desire in the East Asia Pacific region. With encouragement and support it surely won't be long before some of its members are making big waves on the international scene.